This is a certified hood classic. It's once again time to play one of my favorite nations in EU4, Poland. This nation, I've said this before, is a very hard nation to play. You have very top-heavy ideas, meaning that you don't really get your best bonuses and your ideas until the very end or your last idea group. You're surrounded by players such as Hungary, Crimea, Austria, Brandenburg, Sweden, Muscovy, and eventually Ottomans, meaning it's kinda likely you'll get partitioned at some point in the game. But in this channel, we love Poland. And not just in the game. Whenever I play Poland, I always play with the same mindset. Avoid early game player wars and try to keep your neighbors friendly, at least until you finish your third idea group. You can get into the Age of Reformation, get your age bonus, get your third idea group, definitely will become one of the stronger nations in the game. Polska Guru! Polska Guru! Polska Guru! Polska Guru! opener was the same as always. We took the local noble so we can get better mana generation to start, we attack Lithuania with our claims, and we rush down the province of Kyiv because it has a monument in it that gives morale of armies. We waited for the Moldova event, but unfortunately Crimea rushed it down, however we did secure Danzig. A decent start. I used too much manpower in the first war, but that was just some unlucky rolls and stuff. Pro tip for the Danzig event is to check Danzig's provinces of vital interest and make all of the provinces he doesn't have selected as your provinces of vital interest. That way you will annex the Teutons in one war. Afterwards we went for Silesia because they are in our node and there's also trade centers there that we can use. Things were looking pretty decent for our nation until the Crimean Khan attacked. Okay, here's where we probably oh die. Uh, Military advisor, the defender of the faith. We got a level three. This advisor. Poland, this matchup early game is just so hard for Poland to win one versus one. It, it just is. That's just how it is. Initial battles were devastating. The Crimean quality was insane at this stage of the game, and I had basically nothing going for me in these battles. Even when we fought on non flat terrain, I was still losing. He made it all the way to Warsaw before we won our first battle, and we only won this battle because we were able to cut off his reinforcements with a separate stack, but even then, the casualties were devastating. Luckily for us, Muscovy declared war on Crimea, and that's when Crimea began to do stab hits, and we were actually so close to bankruptcy at this point, early game Poland eco is so so bad. So we accepted the stab hit, rebalanced our stability, and did a truce break on Crimea. Crimea responded by giving Muscovy what he wanted and focusing only on me, and it was back to a one versus one. We had fired our discipline event from our advisor, so that meant that we were actually not taking that many casualties since we had superior discipline. And despite winning battle after battle, we started losing lots and lots of money and we're getting very close to bankrupting. I had no idea how Crimea's money was doing, so I began to send stab hits just to get out of this war and secure a victory. Crimea accepted the stab hit and basically we were in the same point that we were before. Both me and Crimea ended up bankrupting. This was our first bankruptcy of the game. Yes, there will be more bankruptcies. It wasn't long until our neighbors took advantage of our bankruptcy. Let's give up. Let's do it! They got me! Alright, send peace. All right, that's fine. Yeah. And that actually, it's actually based. I no longer get rebels anymore until bankruptcy's over because of revanchism. It's actually fine. Look at this. 1.5 years. That's. I thought I would lose this by now, or maybe some of this, but this is recoverable. Being this Poland is recoverable. I'm not even joking. I've seen Poland's in worse position recover. Oh, he probably. We're playing until we're playing until we're in the spectator screen chat. Austria afterwards attacked Venice. However, he didn't know that my bankruptcy was about to end. So I told Venice to call me in the war so I could reclaim my Silesian land. Who decked this war? Oh, call me in, call me in. Call me in, call me in, uh, Nabi. Yeah, yeah, call me in. Yeah. Because you've decked on me. What do you mean, why would you call him in? Maybe be like full unhinged Sven. 
fuck. Give me back Silesia and I'll leave. I won't take money. Austria declined our generous proposal. So we got mill access from Hungary and we joined on Venice's side. Sieging your capital, Erling. <laughs> I'm sieging your capital. I, I have to... Not these battles. Looking good, because I we got the shock phase. Well. I'm spamming Erling with peace deals to annoy him. Yes, I have his capital. I'm gonna I'm gonna burn it too. I'm gonna scorch earth his capital. Hey! <laughs> That's what you get, Erling. Now you're just somebody that I used to know. Somebody! Yes! I'm not even any truce break. I'm not even any truce break. Bro, we're gaming! We're actually gaming! I'm just taking some land. Next move was to declare war on Hungary, who had just lost a war to the Ottomans. To soften the blow, I sang Hungary one of my favorite songs. I'm sorry, baby. Are you really gonna win this battle? <laughs> oh, sorry. You no, were I... the sun no and moon to Excuse me. me. To... No, yeah, I'll never you get over close. you. Oh, you're no. Sure. You'll never I get over me. me. I told you! I told you! Talented, ambitious daughter! I told you! I told you! A few minutes later... Women don't hunt! Women don't hunt! I wanted to take a quick break from this video to let you guys know that for a limited time, the Europa Universalis 4 Complete Collection is on the Humble Bundle. Uh, what this means is that you can get all of the DLCs, except for Origins, for $20, if you pay at least $20, you can get every single DLC up to Leviathan and a 10% coupon for Origins, including Europa Universalis, the base game. And um, the proceeds uh, support a charity. Uh, in this case, it's supporting the World Central Kitchen. I'm not sponsored by uh, Humble Bundle. I'm not sponsored by Paradox in this video. But I still think that this is a great opportunity for many of you guys out there. I know a lot of you guys out there, you're always asking me, what DLCs uh, do I need to play the game? What DLCs do I need for World Conquest? What DLCs do you recommend? Um, well, now you don't even need to do that. You can just pay $20. You get every single DLCs besides Origin. You get a 10% coupon. I know I already said that. But you get a 10% coupon off. Um, but you get all the DLCs. Uh, Third Rome, Leviathan, Emperor, uh, Content Packs, Unit Packs, Rights of Man, Mayor Nordstrom, Common Sense, Eldorado, Res Republica, Wealth of Nations, literally every single DLC up to Origins. You can get it now for just uh, the price of $20. Of course, you can pay more. Link will be down in the description. Link will be also um, in the pinned comment. Check it out, guys. And now back to the video. We still had one issue, and that was the nation of Crimea. He really wanted the state of Kyiv, and we both came to the understanding that if we continued to fight, we would both just be food for a Muscovy who's going to get one of the freest games of his life. So instead, I gave him the state of Kyiv, and we instead allied and became best buds. Next problem we had was Brandenburg, who was having an amazing game. Not only did he kill Hansa and Hesse thanks to help with the Swiss, he also had uh, Austrian's Bohemian land because me and Venice killed Austria. So essentially, we had this really big Brandenburg who was on my border and he wanted Konigsberg, obviously, so he can form Prussia. Well, what did we do? Well, we still didn't have our third idea group yet, um, which would give us our insane quality. So instead, I told him that I would give him Konigsberg for free if he let me integrate Danzig first. This was actually just a lie to buy me some more time. By the way, I stayed Catholic this game. Catholic is incredibly strong ever since the Origins DLC. I'm gonna stay Catholic, I've decided. I did have Ambitious Daughter and then she died from a hunting accident, so now I don't have her anymore. It was the saddest thing of all time. I had uh, the, the queen. The queen, my queen! Where are the dudes? You said there was dudes coming. I don't know, they're probably somewhere in Switzerland and more random, I don't know. Where are the dudes? What? I'm seeding the seeds. I'm, oh, I'm soothing the seeds. <laughs> I'm putting the seeds in. I'm making them worry about this Brandenburg. Yes. The seeds of doubt.
No, I don't want to fight. I do want to wait 21 ideas. This Brandenburg is about to deck on us. I'm calling it right now. We'll get him just a little bit more cannons. Well, to be fair, he's only like 80 dev above me. And now I have, I'm trying to fire morale event. And then we also have five discipline from this right here. If he comes for my throw, we got it. Brandenburg is going to be really rough on tech nine, but we, we have the mill for tech 10. We got the cab, fully drilled cab with 30 combat ability. I think we can deal with him. And I'm saving the money. I'm not just spending this money. Why did it happen right away? Yeah, we're inting, we're inting, we're inting, we're inting. Muscovy is busy fighting Crimea. You know what? We're going to be a sweat and we're going to get a full back row. With the 20% morale event, the 5% discipline from the mission, as well as taking tech 10 nine years ahead of time, which means new cav, there was not going to be a better opportunity. So we striked Brandenburg and we striked him fast. Brandenburg knew we were ahead on tech. And smartly, he did not engage us until he also had the tech as well. But this meant that we were able to siege all the way to his capital. The first battle took place in North Germany on a forest province. We took the discipline mission and we were wrecking Brandenburg. With just one battle, we already had an insane war score and we continued to push forward. Next battle was on Brunswick, another woods province. Even though he had a better general and we were on a minus one roll, our superior quality shined through. And finally, we ended this war fighting again. The Germans simply could not handle the Polish Cav. After that battle and a couple more occupations, we were able to enforce peace. The blitz of Brandenburg was over, and we barely took debt in the process. I just blitzed Germany as Poland. Subscribe, where else do you see that? Where else do you see Germany getting blitzed by Poland, man? Subscribe already, okay? I need the subscriptions. I need it, I need it! Please subscribe. Before our troops could even return home, Brandenburg truce broke, and we were in a war once again. This war was much harder. Our morale from event had worn off and Brandenburg had committed even harder trying to gain victory in this war. No cannons in the back row. What is that? No cannons in the back row. No, 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 no cannons, cannons in the back, back. I knew to win this war, we had to get creative. If we just kept taking singular battles, Brandenburg would eventually win. So, instead, in this engagement, I decided to cut off his reinforcements. You could call it an encirclement. There's two keys to successful cutoffs. First is to take the battle in the right place. Second is to have really good generals. The main reason why this worked so successfully in this war was Brandenburg only had one good general, while I had two really good generals. After that battle, we were getting close to bankruptcy, so we began stab-hitting Brandenburg out so we could get out of this war and safely bankrupt. And that's how we won this war. How many loans more can you take? I can take two more loans. But I can delete this Merc stack. Wait, I, that wasn't Mercs. That wasn't Mercs! You're throwing, Habibi! All right, unsubscribe, unfollow. Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe, unfollow, unsubscribe, unfollow, unsubscribe, unfollow. Who does that? After eating more Lithuanian land, we bankrupted, making this bankruptcy number two. And the Ottomans attacked us. Wow. We had to give up Hungary. It is fine. We get... Now we get 51 revanchism, which means we will stop spawning rebels. This is also upstream, so it's not really a big loss. And this Poland is so schizo. <laughs> gain land, lose land. Gain land, lose land. Gain land, lose land. We just spawn military. I'm gonna take it. I have a feeling. That Brandenburg is gonna deck off the truce. Brandenburg just went bankrupt. The next series of events is when things got really crazy. For some reason, Brandenburg bankrupted after our truce was over. I initially thought that he bankrupted at the same time I did, since I wasn't able to attack him and he wasn't able to attack me, since breaking truces more than once per war was against the rules. I thought it would be an easy war, but then Great Britain intervened and brought his entire army. My allies Venice and Crimea decided to help me after seeing 200,000 British men in North Germany, which somehow turned into like a mini world war over German land. British troops were surprisingly pretty strong, so instead of trying to fight him, I stab-hitted Brandenburg for an all treaties with Great Britain, and I truce broke him, running him down.
we ended up snaking for the gold mine in Bohemia in the peace deal. Then after that, Brandenburg's bankruptcy finally ended and he ended up truce breaking me. Oh Fifth war. Goodness. Fifth war. Just, uh, just white peace. Just white peace. I made a gentleman's deal with Swiss and Sweden. As long as I didn't call in any allies into this war, they won't intervene on Brandenburg's side and they also won't declare on me if I end up having to bankrupt. And this time he had two cannon stacks and better generals, meaning I could not cut off his reinforcements and battles. And now I was over committing again, losing massive amounts of cash, fighting in a death war with Brandenburg once again. Brandenburg was actually winning hard in the start of the war, shocking me and all my neighbors. However, I knew in the long run I would win. Brandenburg simply called in every merc stack he could muster. All I had to do was take battles and eventually his mercs would deplete and I would win. The problem with that though was I needed to also call in a fair amount of mercenaries in order to hold Brandenburg to that point, meaning I definitely would need to bankrupt once again after this war. It wasn't until years into the war that Brandenburg's mercs and manpower finally started to deplete. We finally turned the war and began occupying northern Germany. After winning the war, Swiss and Sweden go in. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, 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 don't want the gig. We don't want a gig. We don't want a gig. But as soon as the war is over, we'll come in. <laughs> Honestly, I love you guys. I love you. I love you. Yagnek, GG, bro. I may or may not have taken Max Loans chat. Now it was time to recover. I had no really enemies for a bit. And I here's where I actually started doing a trick that a chatter taught me in my Twitch chat. If you take out your loans and upgrade monuments, when you bankrupt, those monuments will stay at level 2, level 3, whatever you upgrade them to. So basically, I just went around upgrading every single monument that I had. And then after upgrading every single monument to level 3, we bankrupted. And now it was time for us to finally scale. Our buildings were so bad at this point, just constant war. But now it's time to scale. It was time to build up this Poland. Things? Lot, a lot of buildings. Let's go, chat. Oh yeah, let's go. Look at these buildings. Oh, comes about to go high. The behemoth, one of them. Gonna go so high. Yeah, yeah. I know you guys. Those are, are like, let me see the map. Let me see the map. Here you go. Here's the world map. Oh. This is me. This is me, little Poland over here. And you know what we can do? We can actually click still, this like, button. The AI. Look Think at this, it's, it's dude. Worse Look for at me to this. Go from the, the south because I have plus one of mountains. I did not gank. He's in here and you can, can, can do Poland. I'm actually so proud of this Poland, dude. Can I have a home? I am so proud of this Poland. Look at this, dude. Four times bankruptcy and then look at, the look at the buildings. Look at the buildings. Look. I don't want it. Look. And that's it for this video. This campaign is actually still going on. You can watch it on Mondays at 7 p.m. Central European time. You can watch me play as this Poland. It's still going on. And maybe there'll be a part two of this video. Maybe not. Who knows? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys have been enjoying my content as of late. And that's all I got for you. Uh, please, uh, if you like the video, like it. If you want me to play a certain nation, write down below what nation you want me to play in multiplayer. Yes, right now I'm addicted to multiplayer. And for all my fans who are here for the single player content, I just really enjoy multiplayer. It's just way more fun to me than single player. Fighting AI wars are just not the same as player wars and i hope you guys enjoy that decision as well anyways uh that's it i love you guys uh take care and i'll see you in the next one bye bye